I'm Christine Donaghy, this is Andy White, and we're here with Jim Scribner. Hello. Hi. Jim. Hi. Nice to see you. It's good to be here. So this morning, your talk was sold out. That's right, isn't it? Well, it was full, yes. The, the room was full about 20 minutes before it started, which was rather, rather nerve-wracking, yes. Absolutely. We've had lots of people on the site um, tweeting and telling us how great it was or how they're waiting for your session to come up uh -huh. on the, the website. It's nice to hear. Because it was filmed, so um, people can now watch it, have the, get the handouts from the site. Mm -hmm. And I think we want to make a special mention to Yes, you. a few. Uh, so, uh, Sophie O'Rourke, Sandy Millen, David Reed, and English Australia, thank you for tweeting. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you're happy with this as well, <laughs> extra. I don't know what people will get from the film because it was a workshop, not a talk. So a lot of it was the audience doing things. And I hope that, th that there's some sense of what's going on in the film. I really don't know what it'll look like on... Well, a lot of people use the, the sessions as well for kind of almost like workshops. You yeah. can pause it, yeah. do the activity, and then get back. Okay. It just doesn't But I believe the handouts monitor. are online, so yeah. people can, can, can download those and use those if that's how they yeah. want to do it. Let, let's talk a little bit about what happened in the workshop then. It's, it's okay. demand high. Demand high, yes. And you came up with this yeah. with the fabulous Adrian Underhill. True. All right, yes. can you tell us a little bit more about it? Okay. D demand high is an idea that, as you say, Adrian and myself came up with. It, it's the result of about two years of us having regular conversations and chatting and just trying to review what we'd learnt about language teaching through our, our careers. And we, we started to draw some conclusions. And one of the conclusions that we came to is that we nowadays see a lot of really good teaching going on, but it, it seems that, that students are not really being pushed and challenged, that somehow the methodology and the good materials are doing a lot of the work, and students are sort of going through the motions very often. They're doing an exercise, the teacher says, good, 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 and then they move on to the next thing. But nobody's really pushing and say, saying, is that really the best you can do? Is that the most you can do? And so in the workshop today, I, I took this the example of one typical important stage in a lesson where students have done an exercise, perhaps individually or in pairs, and then the teacher goes through with the class what the answers are. And I was trying to contrast the difference of what's the answer to number one? Good. What's the answer to number two? Good. Number three? Good. I was trying to contrast that sort of tick box approach with mm -hmm. what else could you do with an activity? What, where, and I, I, I threw out this sort of a slightly ridiculous challenge, if you wanted to extend that stage of just checking the answers to an exercise for a full 60 minutes, what are some of the things that you wow. could do to get value out of that? The, the basic idea is, can you move away from just fixing an answer? Because fixing, you know, they either get it right or they get it wrong, and if they get it wrong, then you can make them get it right, but there's not necessarily awareness and insight that comes okay. out of that. So where else could you take it to help learners really explore and understand more. And what are some of the things then that participants came up with? Um, they came up with some, some fine ideas, some ideas about you know, going behind a question and asking things like, uh, so why did they say that? Trying to say it in a different way. What would it be if you said it in a different context? How would you say it differently? And then I, I did a demonstration of a bit of teaching using a number of sort of ideas, one after the other, just so that they could see how it might work. And we, I don't know how long it took, probably about 10 minutes, just looking at one answer with a few words. What was the sentence? Uh, uh, I'll give you a lift, yes. Okay. So just seeing what you could do to explore just a little sentence like that and keep it fun and keep it interesting. And basically, it's just drilling, but, but drilling that pushes at what the learners are capable of doing. So thinking about the stress, thinking about the context. And we did a bit of re repetition just inside the head without actually saying things, Great. which is quite an interesting technique. Yes, yes, I've seen Adrian Underhill do that yeah. before. It's fabulous. Yeah. He did it with pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great. You, you said something very interesting that the teacher is might be doing the methodology really well or using the materials really well. And um, referring then to methodology, is this a new methodology? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked that because yeah? it, it, a number of people have, have said that we're, we've introduced a new method and mm -hmm. we're absolutely adamant that this is not what it is. Demand high is, at, at basics, it's just an idea and it's this very simple idea or question, are you challenging your students as much as you could and what could you do more if you're not challenging them enough? So we're calling it a meme okay. rather than a method I like because that. what we want to do is we want to throw this idea out into the, the language teaching world and then we're very happy for people to take the idea and twist it and change it and mutate it and explore it and 
we, we, I don't think we own it anymore because there's lots of people already doing seminars on this subject and we don't know what they're doing. People are doing it in Delta experimental practice assignments. Um, so the idea is out there and to, to some extent that's all we wanted to do. We just wanted to push a little bit at this idea that we've reached some sort of ultimate in methodology and everybody's having fun and everybody's running around and playing games but have we lost sight of what it's all about and the, what it's all about is where is the learning going on? What, what is the learning yeah, it's, it's quite interesting that you said, okay, we don't own this, no. and a lot of people are picking up on it. Last year's IATEFL, this theme came up again and again, yes. with um, Jeff Hardy Gold, mm -hmm. uh, Duncan Ford, a lot of people talking Anthony about Anthony Gotham was talking Anthony, about it, yeah, and he was, he's very much in the same sort of territory. Yes. I mean, he classes, I think what he does, under, more under dogma than under yes. demand high. And it doesn't really matter what you call it, but I think a lot of people are starting to, to question the, the sort of orthodoxy of where we've got to in, in ELT, that it's all become about fun, about turning the pages of materials. There's this dreadful verb, cover materials. Yeah. There's an awful lot of teachers who feel their job is to cover materials, to keep turning the pages. And we're sim simply saying, that's all okay, whatever you do is okay, but is there a tweak, a twist that you can add to it that, that gets, that actually you start as a teacher thinking about where is the learning in this? And once I've understood where the learning is, how can I help the learning happen more? And how can I worry more about that and a little bit less about making sure I've got pretty pictures or great games or point scoring or whatever? So what would you recommend a teacher does if they want to now reassess themselves and in a lesson tomorrow? What could they do? Well, we have got a website, which I'd love to mention. It's, it's a WordPress blog and it's called Demand High ELT. And one of the things we put on there are observation tasks. So teachers can download an observation task, give it to a colleague. You know, it doesn't need to be a, a, a director of studies or, an, or a head teacher or anything. Just give it to a colleague, say, come into my lesson. And these are observation tasks that specifically focus on how much you're demanding of your students. And it's asking you to look at things like when you check answers to an exercise, do you just say, number one, good, number two, good? Or do you push the students and do you explore? And it's asking you to look at these things. So you get some good feedback and, and hints about where you could go further from that. So that, that's demandhighelt.wordpress.com or whatever okay. it is. Yeah. If, you just, if you just do a Google search for demand high ELT, okay. then that, that will find it. And you said we, that's together that's with... That's me and Adrian. And we're, Adrian Underhill. So, okay. so far, we're the people who are sort of powering this, but I'm, I'm, we are rather hoping that other people will get involved. We know we're getting a huge number of hits on the blog, although the curious thing is very few people are actually daring to post anything. Okay. We're getting very, very few comments, but we're getting a massive number of, of hits. So a lot of people are reading it, and we're hearing about a lot of people around the world doing seminars on it and trying it out in their teaching. But somehow we haven't quite worked out how to get more voices involved. So I don't know if we're scaring people. I think the name may be demand high. It's, I mean, a, it's a little bit uh, you're scary. You're also demanding a lot from the teachers, aren't Well, I you? think that may be part of it. Maybe dogma is more sort of all-inclusive by sort of, you know, whatever you do in the class may be acceptable, whereas we're sort of saying, you know, there are things to aim for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so if you're watching now, go to the site and give some feedback to Jim and Adrian. <laughs> Let them know what you're doing. Well, we, we, we will try and rebuild the site, I think, okay. over the next few months, and we'll try and rework it so that the main strand is simply a message and reply thing, and then people can access the other bits if they right. want to. But I was thinking too that they don't always also have to summon come and observe, but they could video themselves. Yeah, there's, there's some self-observation stuff that they can oh, do as well. Yep. Yep. The reflection tasks. Yep, it's all there. Fabulous. Yeah. Um, but, but before we run out of time, I think it's really important to say, first of all, you're sponsored by Richmond. I, I am, yeah. thank you. And Richmond, you, yes. Yes, and you've, you've got a new book coming out? Or I've is got it a new book, which, you know, I was very excited. It actually came out today. I, I always oh, love, excellent. I love it when I see a new book for the first time, and I, I actually picked it up today for the first time. And I should have a copy in my hand to show you people, yeah. but it's, it's called Visual Grammar, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's basically a grammar book for students, for, lo for low-level students, A2 level it's pitched at, and it's, it's a book of grammar exercises, but it's, it's got a few twists to it, and it's based around, it is the traditional grammar syllabus of items, but it's based more, slightly more around how the language is used. Okay. So, for example, rather than putting all the present, perf sorry, present simple into one unit, and here's all the meanings and uses and all the form problems Too in one much, page, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've split it up into different meanings and uses. Great. So it actually, the students actually get far more chance to focus on exactly what the meaning is of an item. Fabulous. I Visual want grammar. To ask, <laughs> does it have an answer key, or does it push them to find the answers themselves? Well, you can, you can buy the demand high version without <laughs> answer key, or the, uh, the uh, demand low version, which has the answer key in the back. And there's a lot of on, online uh, for the teacher. There's a whole pile of every unit will have 
the material from the book available as online material that they can use in class. So the teacher can actually make use of that. And you can, the teacher can choose then how far to push the students in the lesson. That's great. Thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very fabulous. much. You're such a powerhouse. We didn't even <laughs> get to, to learning teaching at all. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, next time, next time. Um, so thank you very much for watching and we'll be back in a few minutes with Mark Walker.